In this brief video, I am going to discuss the metaphysical problem of moral responsibility in the context of Roderick Chisholm's work, Human Freedom and the Self. Let's get started. Here is the principal example. Imagine that there is a man with a gun, call him the gunman, who is threatening a second man, call him the target. Chisholm invites us to imagine a point before the gunman does anything, a point before he either pulls the trigger or refrains from pulling the trigger. Expressed otherwise, before the trigger is pulled, there are two possible worlds. World A, which entails the gunman pulling the trigger and killing the target, and World B, which entails the gunman refraining from pulling the trigger and the target is spared. Now that we've framed the principle, Chisholm claims that what makes the gunman morally responsible for killing the target in world A is that the gunman was responsible for killing the victim. And what makes the gunman responsible for killing the victim in world A is that the gunman could have refrained from not pulling the trigger. Expressed otherwise, what makes the gunman responsible for what he did consists in his power to do or not do a particular action. It's not enough that the gunman could have performed the action to be responsible, according to Chisholm. You must also have the ability to not perform the action. This same logic applies to possible world B. The gunman is morally responsible for not killing the target because he could have killed the target, but didn't. Now, with the principal example out of the way, Chisholm invites us to imagine a case with a hypnotist. In possible world A, the hypnotist implants a suggestion in the mind of the gunman to pull the trigger, and the gunman pulls the trigger. As a result, the target dies. In such a case, Chisholm says, it seems that the hypnotist is responsible for what the gunman does, because the gunman cannot act otherwise which is to say, it's not in the gunman's power to refrain from pulling the trigger, because the hypnotist makes him pull the trigger. And this means that the gunman is not morally responsible for what he does, because the hypnotist, rather than the gunman, is responsible for what the gunman does. And therefore, the hypnotist is morally responsible for the death of the target. This same logic applies to possible world B, such that the hypnotist, not the gunman, is responsible for the gunman doing nothing, since it's not in the gunman's power to pull the trigger. And therefore, the hypnotist, not the gunman, is responsible for sparing the target. This leads to Chisholm's next example, entailing beliefs and desires. And there is a big conditional to pay attention to. The example asks what follows from the possibility that our beliefs and desires are not up to us. That what we believe and the desires we have may be caused by something else and we have no control over them. To motivate this suggestion, imagine that it's dark. Now imagine that it is light. Now ask yourself, did you have a choice? about whether to believe that something was dark or that something was light. Now let's think about desires. A basic example is this. Imagine any person in your life that you love. Then ask yourself, did you choose to fall in love with that person? Or did it happen to you? And this is what we mean when we say that someone falls in love. Okay. Now for the example. Chisholm says, what if, like a hypnotist, we are being controlled by our beliefs and desires? And what if we don't control what we believe or desire? In such a case, it seems like our beliefs and desires would be responsible for what we do. And so, in the case of possible world A, 
If the beliefs and desires are responsible for the gunman pulling the trigger, then it wasn't in the gunman's power to do anything else, namely to refrain from pulling the trigger. And therefore, the gunman is not morally responsible for killing the target because his beliefs and desires caused him to pull the trigger. Likewise, it would seem that in possible world B, the gunman was not morally responsible for sparing the target because the belief and desires in this case are responsible for the gunman sparing the target since it was not up to the gunman to do anything else. This leads to a third example, which is similar to the previous involving moral character. When we think of a morally good person, we tend to think of someone who has a good character. But what if our moral character is not up to us? So let's suppose that our character may not be up to us and that our character is responsible for what we do. So in possible world A, when the gunman pulls the trigger, it's his evil character which had caused him to do it, since the gunman couldn't have acted otherwise. And this means that the gunman's evil character is morally responsible for what the gunman did. And this same logic applies to possible world B, such that the gunman's good character in this case is responsible for the gunman doing nothing, since it wasn't in the gunman's power to pull the trigger. And therefore, the gunman's good character is morally responsible for sparing the target. And now we arrive at our final example, which we can call the God example. To begin with, here are some premises that individuals from a religious background should be familiar with. Premise one, if God is all knowing, then God knows what we'll do before we do it. Premise two, if God is all powerful, then God can stop us from doing what we'll do before we do it. Therefore, it follows from those two premises that if we do anything, then it's only because God decided not to stop us from doing it. This means that in possible world A, God is responsible for what the gunman does because it was not up to the gunman to do otherwise since God would have stopped him from doing otherwise. And therefore God, rather than the gunman, is morally responsible for the death of the target. And this also means that in possible world B, God is responsible for the gunman doing nothing, since it was not up to the gunman to pull the trigger. And therefore God, and not the gunman, is morally responsible for sparing the target. That's it for now. Thank you for your kind attention. And until next time, take care.